This segment sponsored by GBMC Healthcare. Now, as we continue to evolve, so does the conversation about sexual assault. Joining us today to shed more light on this topic, are, you're welcoming us from GBMC. How are you? Good, thanks. So tell everybody your name, introduce yourself. So my name is Laura Clary, and I'm a forensic nurse examiner, and I'm the program manager of the GBMC Sexual Assault Forensic Examination and Domestic Violence Program. See, that's why I let you say <laughs> it so much more. It's always a pleasure to have you here, and such a serious topic for us to talk about, right? So. Today, we're talking about having that talk with our kids. We were chatting a little bit right before we started the show. What are some of the messages that parents really need to hammer home when talking about sexual assault? So I think uh, one of the big things to, to mention is that this is a crime that does not discriminate. So no one is immune from it. It can affect um, people from all different walks of life, um, all different races, gender, socioeconomic status. So really, everybody needs to be having this, this talk with their child. All right. And so at what age should it start? Because we were saying, you know, I have an older one that's a freshman in college, but also have a toddler. Is that too young? No. I say the earlier you can start the conversation, the better. And even with the younger, uh, the younger kids just talking about their body parts and mm -hmm. the correct anatomical names for their body parts, letting them know that those are not dirty words um, and talking about healthy relationships and consent and boundaries. So the earlier you can start, the better. Um, but, you know, continue that conversation throughout their life. And so that is one of the things that I see right in the mom blogs. You know, we talk about a hoo-hoo and a boo-boo. Is that okay or should we not do that and actually say what the body parts are? You should actually be saying what the body parts are because when you give it a, what we say, like a pet name, uh -huh. um, you're making it feel like it's a dirty word and it's something that shouldn't be talked about. So making sure that you use the actual name for what that body part is, it's no different than saying this is your elbow. It's a body part, it's not a bad word. So using, we always recommend using the correct body uh, anatomical names for their private parts. Okay, so unfortunately so many kids are actual victims of sexual assault, right? But they may not always know how to express it. What are things that we should look for, things that they would tell us? So if you notice that there's a change in your child's behavior, mm -hmm. if um, they start losing interest in things that they were previously interested in, if they stop wanting to play a sport, if you notice that their grades are falling or any kind of just change in their behavior, they're becoming withdrawn from the family, um, definitely a time where you should maybe engage in a conversation. Okay, and so what if it's something that we're thinking is happening in school? How do you figure out if maybe what they're telling you is true. So I always say you, you should always support your child mm -hmm. or, or a friend or anybody. If they come to you with information like that, um, they're telling you one of the most difficult and traumatizing things that's ever happened to them. Mm -hmm. So your job as a parent or as a friend or as someone who's getting that information is to believe that child and to listen to them and to support them um, and help guide them through the process of getting help. Okay, so what about public awareness? Do you think that the public is aware or do we need to put this issue out there in the forefront more? I always say the more awareness the better and uh, I still hear that this doesn't happen in our community or, or we don't need community education in our community because it doesn't happen and it's just because you don't hear about it doesn't mean that it's not happening because trust me it's happening in every single community. All right, so if, if you or somebody you know has been a victim of sexual assault or is dealing with the trauma of it, tell everybody where they can go. So you can always come to GBMC. We are a 24-7, 365-day-a-year program. Our, do our doors never close. It's a 100% free and confidential service, um, so they can always come to GBMC. Um, you can always utilize your school resource officers in um, the schools as well as your campus health on your college campuses. So there are a lot of places for, for victims to turn so it's important for them to know that they're not alone and they do have places they can go to for help well thank you as always for being here with us touching on such an important topic again all that information there on the bottom of our screen Laura thank you thank